Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I am your host, Chris Brown. Today, we bring you an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, Reeve Cam Blight, as we discuss the shift in Manitoba's politics following the 2023 provincial election. In a historic turn of events, Wab Canoe and the Manitoba NDP have brought an end to seven years of progressive conservative rule in the Keystone province. Canoe's party secured a divisive victory, claiming 34 of 57 seats in the Legislative Assembly, while Heather Stephenson and the Manitoba PCs were reduced to 22 seats. The Manitoba Liberals, once a formidable presence in the legislature, now just hold one seat in the Provincial Assembly. But what truly sets this election apart is the commitment made by the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, led by President Blight. Under the banner of Let's Grow Manitoba Together, the AMM campaigned vigorously on four priorities to make Manitoba's municipalities a top priority in this election. So we sat down with Resident Blight to discuss the aftermath of the historic election. We'll explore his expectations for the incoming Premier, Wab Canoe, and his new NDP government. Also, with his noticeable rural urban divide in the province, we'll also examine with President Blight what this shift in power means for rural municipalities like his own, the rural municipality of Portage to the Prairie. So stay with us as we go behind the scenes of the political upheaval and its implications for Manitoba municipalities. This is the Municipal Affairs. Cam, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I, I, I want to start with kind of the big news that happened this week in Manitoba, where uh, Wab Canoe, Premier Designate of the province, ended seven years of progressive conservative reign in the province. And I want to know from you as president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, what were your initial reactions with this sort of seismic shift in the province? Well, you know, first of all, thank you very much uh, for having me on the show here today. And it's definitely my pleasure to speak on behalf of AMM to discuss uh, the recent provincial election that took place uh, in Manitoba. Uh, you know, our, our past couple of months have been very busy. Uh, you know, a little bit, we had a shift from our normal, you know, activities at the association to, uh, you know, basically centered right around the, the election and making sure that we got our priorities uh, front and center with all the parties. And uh, to be honest, we actually were preparing for a potential government change. So uh, this certainly isn't a did not come to as a surprise to us. Um, and you know what we felt here uh, with the association is that with elections comes opportunities. And regardless of it, you know if if, if the uh, the governing party changed or not, uh, we felt there's great opportunities that needed to be uh, taken advantage of per se. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that we positioned ourselves in just, you know, in such a manner that we could make sure that municipal priorities were front and center and to make sure that we were part of the conversation for all the parties uh, that were running to govern our great province. Um, you know, we want to make sure it's part of their platforms. And I, I think we accomplished that. And uh, we're very excited to get working with the new NDP government. Now, that, that sort of campaign that you launched earlier this year in, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, May or early June, the Let's Grow Manitoba Together campaign, um, you, you spoke with all parties, but I want to focus on what the uh, NDP, because they are the governing party now, promised the municipalities. Uh, are you going to be holding their feet to the fire on your four key priorities that you laid out as AMM uh, in June when you set out that Let's Grow Manitoba Together campaign? Oh, absolutely, we will, we will be. And, you know, I, I think if the early conversations that we've had with uh, Premier Desnett uh, Canoe and, and the, the MLAs at the time of the NDP party were any, or any, any indication, um, I, I think that uh, we're going to have a great working relationship going forward. Uh, when we held our uh, spring convention, we actually held a, a, a kind of a not really a formal debate because the election wasn't officially called yet but we had all major party leaders there discussing municipal priorities in front of uh, all you know our entire membership and premier now premier doesn't it canoe or canoe uh, was the first to say that he will eliminate the operating funding freeze that municipalities have been facing for the past seven years and of course that's welcome news to our membership and since then the uh, the the PC government did uh, el eliminate that funding freeze, 
Um, but uh, the NDP have promised to provide predictable and fair funding going forward, and they're willing to discuss uh, you know, tying, you know, the numbers to inflation or looking at ways to uh, incorporate uh, nominal increases on a yearly basis, but they for sure want to make sure that it's something that is consistent going forward and that we can, you know, properly plan and prepare for years ahead. And so that's something that we're very um, intrigued by and, and excited to hear. And we're going to continue to work hard on, um, you know, another one of our pillars was investing in infrastructure. That one didn't get quite as much um, traction as we had hoped. Uh, but yet, uh, you know, Premier K uh, Desmond Canoe definitely did say that he recognizes that the economic uh, horse must pull the social cart. And so in a lot of cases, what's holding Manitoba back and, and Manitoba municipalities back is that we have a massive infrastructure deficit, uh, whether it be in water, wastewater or roads, etc. And so, you know, we're hoping that his party is going to recognize that, that deficit is uh, something that's holding us back and that the dollars need to flow uh, in, into strategic investments so we can kind of, you know, continue to uh, attract the economic investment that is there uh, knocking on our door right now, as well as uh, improving residential water systems and uh, internet connectivity, et cetera. Uh, there's also, you know, great discussion around healthcare, which is one of our pillars, which was investing in people. And, uh, you know, that's something that they made as the, the key focal point of part of their campaign and also public safety. That, that's something that uh, we brought forward was a real concern for our entire membership across the province. And it was also a major part, a major conversation that took place uh, by all parties and especially the NDP. So we're very excited. I, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to sit down with uh, Premier Desmond Canoe. And in fact, we do have a meeting coming up. Uh, it's been scheduled for early next week to sit down and have some initial discussions. Uh, we want to work together with this NDP government. And in some cases, you know, we want to be that conduit that can help bridge any sort of gaps or help, you know, with communication to the municipalities outside of the city of Winnipeg. And uh, so we, once again, we just want to be a part of that conversation and be sitting at the table and, and help the NDP fulfill a lot of the commitments that they made during the election campaign. Now, I'm going to ask a very political question here, Cam, and I apologize if it's out of left field here, but uh, from an outsider's perspective, the Manitoba election results kind of end it with a urban-rural divide, and with the, the majority of uh, seats in Winnipeg going for the NDP, the majority of the rural seats going for the, uh, the opposition now PCs, and the North going for the NDP. Um, does this make it harder for the association to sort of work on both levels when you're trying to advocate for all municipalities where a government is solely uh, focused on uh, seats in Winnipeg right now? You know, I, I, I don't think so. Um, I, I think we do have a great opportunity as a province uh, in order to grow and improve our, our wonderful province. It, it takes all municipalities, not just one. And I, I think um, if, if you listen to uh, Mr. Canoe's uh, speech that he gave gave after being uh, you know told that they were the, the winning party um, you know he, he spoke specifically to that issue that he recognizing that you no know, not a lot of votes or uh, you know seats came from outside of the city of Winnipeg but he's just asking for everyone to have an open mind to give them a chance and, and possibly then after they see what they're going to do and they're going to come good on their words and, and, and produce for all uh, people across this province that then maybe people will give them a chance in another four years. And I, I think that that was uh, some excellent comments and it, and it, uh, I really appreciated hearing that. And it's something that I'm certainly uh, very encouraged by and that we'll continue to be able to uh, work together. And I, I think the bottom line is um, everyone here, that's whether you're on a, uh, a municipal council in the very Southwest corner of the province of Manitoba to the North, to, you know, from our smallest communities to our largest, we all want to see our communities thrive. And that it's 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 not about political strife. It's not about your 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 own personal political beliefs. Uh, it's about doing what's in the best interest of your residents uh, for your municipality, which is therefore you know the residents of the province of Manitoba, and uh, working together with all parties. And I, I think that we're going to have great success. I really do. I I, I firmly believe that. Um, 
uh, that we're, we're coming forward, that we're, we're going to be bringing forward the message of uh, situations and issues that concern all Manitobans, regardless of uh, where they are from. And uh, I, I firmly believe that this uh, NDP government's going to be work, willing to work with us with an open mind and, um, you know, regardless of who voted for who, uh, because we're all in it for the same reasons, and that is to improve our great province. Now, during this transition time, it's going to be sort of a standstill with the province and the municipalities as people are going to be appointed to cabinet and then people are going to be learning the ropes as ministers and even uh, the new cabinet and new premier is going to be learning the ropes as well. In that time, what are you hoping as AMM president to do to try to make sure that the issues that your municipalities are facing aren't being left on the table until a new cabinet is up and running? Well, I, I guess, uh, first of all, I've uh, had multiple conversations I've re uh, with Pre Premier Desnick Canoe, um, and uh, I, I, we're already setting up our first meeting, which will be coming at the beginning of the week. Um, and I, I just want to make sure that our, you know, our, our municipal issues are um, you know, front and center with them, as I know they're being pulled in so many different directions, but I just want to make sure that when they are ready to have these discussions, these conversations, I want them to know that we are going to be ready as well. We're going to help them, uh, you know, better understand the needs of all Manitoba municipalities across the province. And uh, we're here to help when, you know, just, uh, I want to make sure that we are a part of the conversation that we're at the table. Uh, because I think we can bring a lot of value to this to help with, you know, to make this transition as smooth as possible. And uh, because we do have great knowledge and great relationship with all relationships with all the municipalities across our province. And we understand the issues that all Manitobans are facing. And, uh, you know, we're going to be there to make sure that we're uh, going to be bringing forward these issues and helping in any way, uh, shape or form that we can uh, to help the new provincial government better understand these challenges and that what any potential decisions we're going to make, how it's going to impact these, uh, you know, municipalities, um, you know, from north to south to east to west. And uh, I think how the very did, first step is uh, by having that meeting. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, I was going to say, how do you see yourself helping? What's the role that municipalities can play in the short term to help the new government with the issues that are happening locally? Is it just having these conversations, like you're saying, with the new premier, the potential new cabinets, or is it starting these conversations even with the newly elected MLAs in Brandon East, in Dauphin, in some of the downtown suburbs of uh, Winnipeg, where they saw some gains as well? Are those conversations needed as well, instead of just having it with the premier? but all of the N uh, MLAs, even if they're PCs or li the one Liberal or the uh, NDP? No, I, absolutely. And that's going to take some time because everybody has to get settled into their, you know, their, their roles as MLA. And then, you know, we'll see how the cabinet plays out. Uh, but, you know, the first step is to meet with the, the Premier and then we'll see, um, you know, who we can speak with after that. And it's also going to be our staff connecting with their staff. And, uh, you know, we're very fortunate that uh, the NDP staff did sit down when they're putting together their platform. They sat down with our AMM staff and they better understand, you know, set, they sat down to better understand our concerns and issues. And so we already have that going for us. There's a working relationship there. We're going to continue to to try and continue to build on the relationships that we have and start forming some new ones, as well as I, I'm going to try and help with connecting uh, the NDP government with uh, other municipal municipally elected officials across the province. Um, just to make sure that they can better understand the challenges and concerns that they have uh, from all different corners of our province. So right now, it's just strictly going to be about uh, communication. Just uh, sit down and have these conversations, and we'll have the conversations with any and, and every uh, NDP elected official and staff member that will sit down with us. Now, uh, the premier designate just announced his transition t advisory committee earlier this morning as of recording this uh, interview, and on it were uh, two mayors, one from the north and one from the south. Uh, for you, does it give you some hopefulness that there are municipal leaders around the table in this advisory uh, role for the new premier designate? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's definitely a positive to see that there's a, a um, a couple uh, municipal officials that have been uh, appointed to this transition team. And it's also really good to see that they are from different uh, geographical areas of our province. So we have great representation all the way from the north down to the south. Uh, so I, I feel this is very encouraging. And uh, both Mayor Burley or ex-Mayor uh, 
Burley and uh, Mayor Spence uh, are very knowledgeable individuals and they have lots of experience in the municipal world. Uh, so we certainly feel that this is an encouraging step for uh, municipalities. Well, I'm assuming I'll be chatting with you in a few weeks once the cabinet is announced and the new Minister of Municipal Affairs is appointed. But until then, thank you so much for chatting with me again, Cam. Absolutely. And thank you very much for the opportunity. And we appreciate all the hard work you do uh, representing municipalities across our great country. And that's all for this new episode of Municipal Affairs. We'd like to extend our heartfelt gratitude for all of those who have tuned in and watched today's episode. Your support means the world to us. Now remember, our mission is to bring you the most important municipal stories from across Canada, and we can't do it without you. So please, keep those stories coming. Share your municipal news, your municipal concerns, and even your municipal triumphs with us. Your engagement is what fuels our passion for shedding light on the issues that truly matter in our communities. And your voices are essential to our mission, and we're here to amplify those voices. We're off on Monday, October 9th for Thanksgiving, but we will be back on Monday, October 16th. Until then, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking. Mm -hmm.